It's the Flow Friday Night Sports Show, and it's time for us now to talk Northern Areas football. Back in action last weekend, it was round one of matches, and the great Graham Spud Mackay was on location checking it out for us. Spud, how are you, mate? Good, thanks, Jase. Yeah, excellent. Uh, excellent round of footy last week. Um, two really close games, one not so close, um, but I think the association would be pretty happy with by the look of it, you, you've probably got five teams that are somewhere around the mark. Indeed. And the one that's chasing those five is probably Jamestown, Peterborough, your boys. Uh, no match for the Tigers of Southern Flinders. Uh, the Tigers went on the attack at Jamestown. They won 17-12, 1-14. Jamestown, Peterborough, 2 seven nineteen. So, so a few scoring shots for uh, the Jamestown, Peterborough boys, but uh, just not quite in the same class just yet, Spud. No, certainly not. Uh, I mean, I suppose I'm a fellow that's uh, a glass half full sort of yep. thing, and uh, I, I saw some positives there um, that uh, it, it's going to be a hard season for them because they, they are certainly down on personnel. But I reckon I, I listened to Chris Stacey and uh, the coach, and he was very good with them, and uh, I'm sure that with his patience, uh, he, he will sort of see an improvement there from some of those younger ones as, as the season goes on. And uh, the, the main thing is that uh, they they sort of learn out of it. And uh, I did see a bit of a problem up forward, uh, and that that's the one thing. If you if you can sort of kick uh, five or six goals in a match, it probably looks better on the scoreboard. Mm. Uh, they, they certainly did work hard, but uh, not not able to convert on on the scoreboard. No, that's true. And really, if you have a look at the first quarter blitz, seven six to one straight. I mean, outside of that, it, it's ten goals to one, so it's it's still a uh, it's still a fair old touch up. But I mean, nine scoring shots means you're not completely hopeless. Uh, this is not no, that's not, right. It's not like this yep, is the worst. Right. It's not like this is the worst side you've ever seen in the history of anything. And they will only get better as the year goes on. So you're right. Now, there is some positives for Jamestown Peterborough, but also some positives for Southern Flinders, obviously. Yeah, look, very impressive. Uh, I don't want to sort of. Uh, push them too much at this stage, mm. but uh, obviously uh, they were well served by their uh, coach in Nick Pierce, uh, and the on-baller in Scott Galbraith was very, very impressive. So uh, that that sort of um, augurs pretty well for them. Uh, it may be uh, that uh, they when, when they sort of come up against a team like Oru with uh, uh, Aidan Lee there in the ruck, uh, that may sort of test them a little bit, but they, they were able to sort of move the ball out the centre pretty clear, cleanly, and I was impressed with some of the younger ones too. I thought that they they were, were quite good. Um, and uh, obviously, they, they, ones like Will Smart and Scott Coombe uh, haven't ha- seen a lot of A-grade football at this stage, but uh, they are only going to get better. So, yeah, very promising signs for Southern Flinders, and uh, uh, we'll see how they go this week. We will. Uh, let's head to Port Broughton next from last weekend. And uh, Broughton, Mundura, we both thought they'd probably get up here, but tales of Oruru's demise may have been premature. Uh, in a great game of footy, 11 9 75, Broughton, Mundura, 10 9 69. So Oruru, too good by one straight kick. In a game that uh, seesawed a fair bit during the second half, Oruru were in control at half time, and Broughton, Mundura just couldn't quite peg them back. Yeah, some of these matches, or at least two of them, it, it appears as though there might have been a bit of wind favouring one end because Oru kicked four goal in the uh, in the second second quarter to, to lead at half time, uh, but then Broughton Mundura were able to get back uh, and uh, lead at three quarter time, having kicked five goals in that third quarter, but uh, then uh, only kicked one in the last quarter. So no, look, uh, that that's a great result because uh, Oru. Uh, they, they certainly, uh, well, I, I don't know what Matt Dignan as coach is, is doing with them now, but they have a bit of a, a history of not being able to or not hitting uh, the uh, the track very much early on. But they, as the season goes on, they just improve. But uh, he may have changed that because he's a new age coach and uh, they, they may be looking to, uh, to to really get the points on the board early, which they've done here. And uh I reckon they'd be pretty happy to go down to Broughton and come away with the two points. Yeah, absolutely. Lee, Nichols and Duffy named the best for Oru. Uh, Whelan, Hayes and Bowley uh, best for Broughton, Mundura. So uh, only early doors for both sides yet, but promising start for both. 
Um, Spud, the last match of the round was the tightest contest of the lot. And you talk about wind. Well, it obviously played a role here. BMW took on Crystal Brook. It was Crystal Brook getting home by just three points in the end in a game that seesawed all day long. Yeah, an excellent game. And uh, I, I would have thought that uh, uh, both sides had sort of come away um, with you know, having had a, a really solid hit out here. Um, BMW probably uh, 25 scoring shots to 23. Uh, a few more shots there, but weren't able to put them through the, the big ones. But uh, no, Crystal Brook, uh, that they are still going to be, I think, uh, pretty much around the mark because I reckon they've got good on ballers and an up forward as well. Absolutely, mate. And I'll tell you what, the tail of the tape here, I reckon, anyway, is what BMW did uh, with obviously their use of the breeze. So in the first and third quarters, they've kicked 10 of their 11 goals, but they also registered nine behinds. If you look at Crystal Brook, uh, with the use of the breeze, they kicked, uh, what's that, uh, five goals in the second quarter, and then they kicked another four goals, so nine goals in uh, those quarters, but uh, much more accurately, uh, nine goals, three. So they managed to score a little bit into the breeze. That third quarter, they kicked three goal, one into the tail of the breeze. So uh, if you look at that, um, Crystal Brook obviously did the damage there in that third quarter and were able to kick a little bit straighter when it mattered. Yeah, definitely, and you're spot on there. Obviously, the, the, there must have been a, a breeze favouring uh, one of the ends there, and uh, so therefore they've uh, been able to capitalise on that and, and get the two points. So, mm. um, a, a good again, if you can go onto the opposition's ground and, and come away with the two points, you're always pretty happy with that. Exactly. He'll beat it four goals for Crystal Brook, a perennial goal kicker, and that man Chris Christofferson's back again. Uh, in fact, it's M. Christofferson. Yep. Uh, he booted three goals for BMW. <laughs> so well done. The two Kanga boys named in the best, along with Taylor and Wolford for BMW and uh, Coffee Millard Capitola and uh, Lambert Best for Crystal Brook. And I guess that leads us uh, to the end of that round and into round two. And this should be an interesting round of matches, Spud. Yeah, this is the Anzac round uh, on Saturday. So uh, the juniors kick off at 9.15 uh, as opposed to 9.25. And the reason for that is that they have a, an Anzac service just before the start of the A-grade game. And the netballers usually come along and are part of that uh, on, on the oval uh, just before. And it will be uh, a great day. I think that this Anzac day, uh, Anzac round has done a lot to... Uh, sort of putting the point point out there for the uh, juniors, uh, for, for our junior players, both footballers and netballers, that they uh, they now appreciate what Anzac Day is about. And uh, I think that's been one of the great things about incorporating that into this. So each each of the uh, games will have a, a medal uh, to uh, recognise the best player in, in the football there. Two of the medals are uh, presented uh, by the association. And uh, the other one is the AP Sullivan Medal, uh, which is presented by to, to the uh, uh, best best team in, and that's sort of shared around so that it's not the same teams playing for that each, each year. So every team gets a chance to. It's quite a prestigious prestigious medal to, to win. So sure. um, uh, that that will be a bit of a highlight for for, for the those participating on Saturday. All right, let's have a look at Saturday's matches. Uh, and we might start at Oruru, where the home side uh, had a, a win last week. They take on Jamestown Peterborough, your boys. Uh, obviously, uh, they'll need to uh, continue to improve week on week, Jamestown Peterborough, but Oruru, short price favourites here. Yeah, they'd be, uh, I would have thought, pretty strong there. J- Simon Jackson will be in the ruck up against probably Aiden Lee. And uh, Simon was... was Handy, like he, he worked hard against Nick Pierce last week, but uh, he, he'll just he, he sort of will struggle. To, he didn't probably needs to just time his his run a little bit better. He was sort of getting caught out a little bit at the centre bounces anyway, but uh, at the boundary throwings, he, he's, he's able to use his body and, and sort of to win those two effects. But Oruru's on ball brigade uh, will be pretty handy uh, with uh, Tom Moten and uh, uh, Darren Hughes. Uh, they'd be, uh, oh, they've, they've got a, a, a good depth of, of on ballers. So that'll put a lot of pressure on Jamestown Peterborough. Um, I'm, I'm happy that, that 
sort of a couple of Boomard boys are, are showing form um, last week. So uh, if they continue to do that, uh, they'll be around the mark there for a bit, but Oru will be far too strong. You would think so. Uh, the other two games look like they're going to be beauties. Uh, first of all, Crystal Brook. Um, they welcome Broughton Mundura to town, who went down by a kick last week. Uh, Crystal Brook, as we know, winning a thriller. So uh, both of these sides around the mark. Who's going to win this one? Yeah, this is going to be a really good one because Broughton won't want to slip up twice uh, here. And, and yet uh, they uh, probably haven't got a great history up there at, at Crystal Brook. Um, it'll be a great matchup between Darren Chillaby, one of the assistant coaches, where, and he'll probably front up against Tommy Whelan, who was in Broughton Mundura's best player uh, last week. So uh, that that'll be a great great matchup and well worth going on to have a look at. Uh, Broughton Mundura, Matty Hayes, I, I, and Tom Button give them a good solid uh, performance in, in the centre there. But then you, on the other hand, you've got Luke Capitola, who's probably lost. A little bit of his pace nowadays, but boy, he's strong over the ball. And uh, when he gets it, he, he's able to dish out to, to runners. So um, he, he's very serviceable for Crystal Brook. And Joel Millard is, is always good there. Look, I, I, I guess uh, if you're in, in any doubt, you, you generally look for the home team, don't you? And I, I'd probably say, well, maybe Crystal Brook having sort of put in a really good performance last week up at uh, Wilmington, that they'd be looking to just go one step further this week and maybe just uh, put Broughton Mundura under a bit of pressure. But Broughton Mundura, I'm, I'm pretty sure, would have learned a little bit from, from last week and, and they will be bound to rebound uh, with Nick Hewitt as their coach. But I'll, I'll go for Crystal Brook, Joe. All right. Uh, and uh, we may be doing the same again uh, in terms of the picking the home side because <laughs> Southern Flinders will welcome BMW to town. And this looms as a bit of a, a really good game of football. This one, BMW would have been disappointed last week to go down in a game. Maybe they should have won. Southern Flinders had that thumping win over Jamestown Peterborough. So uh, what's the form line like here, Spud? And how do we weigh it up? <laughs> well, it's being played at Gladstone, so... Uh... Uh, I, I'm not too sure whether that will favour either of those sides. Look, uh, BMW are served very well by their, their coach, Alex Hanger, and of course his brother, Lucas Hanger, was the uh, uh, medal, male medal winner last year. Um, and uh, I've already mentioned last week, I think, about Brad Taylor. He's, he's a, a really good uh, on-baller for them. Pl- plays a little bit out of, out of the back line there sometimes, now, off the half-back flank, that type of thing. Yep. But... Uh, Southern Flinders, yeah, as I said, it'll be interesting to see how they can sort of come up against this because uh, Nick Pierce, yeah, uh, the Southern Flinders coach, will be the one that will look to give them first use of the ball out of the centre. And if he can get an ascendancy there over the BMW, uh, Ruckman, that that would then uh, give them first use of the ball. And uh, with Scott Galbraith, I was very impressed with him last week. I thought that uh, he looks a, a really good uh, solid on baller gave them a lot of drive, and then Will Smart, Scott Coomer, the youngsters who who sort of kicked a few goals last week. But this will be a little bit harder this week because uh, uh, Braden Battersby, I think, is quite strong in in the back line for BMW. Um, but again, uh, I, I would have thought maybe Southern Flinders because it's a home game. But uh, don't be surprised if BMW do win this one. But we'll certainly be looking for the scores to come in. Uh, in both of those games on Saturday. Indeed, and Spud, uh, just to remind you, you were one out of three last week. Um, I think I was too, just quietly, but never mind. So uh, let's hope your tipping's improved. Uh, also, uh, I hope you have a great Anzac Day too, mate, along with the footy this weekend. Enjoy it. It's a great competition at the moment, Northern Areas. Yeah, thanks, Jase. Look, I, I, I'm quite happy to be proved wrong, because I think that's what the association wants to see is we don't want to uh, have somebody come out here and say, oh, well, they're going to win, and it just follows the script. So, yeah, should be a great day, day of footy uh, on Saturday. So it looks like uh, it's not going to be uh, wet up here, so they better make the best of these fine conditions because we certainly hope the rain isn't far away. Exactly, mate. Uh, enjoy the weekend, Spud. Thanks again. Thanks, Joe. Catch you.